Britain is a land of great contrasts, remote fishing villages, and great docks, lakes, great mountains, and flat, productive farmland. Tradition and development. Peaceful farming country and teeming towns. Agriculturists. Industrial workers. People in business and commerce. Very old buildings. And very new buildings. The British Isles lie within the northern hemisphere between 50 and 60 degrees north latitude. They are well situated in relation to other countries of the world since most of the Earth's land masses lie to the north of the equator. The position of the British Isles close to the northwest coast of Europe has been favorable to trade from the Middle Ages since they lie on the traditional trade routes between northern Europe and the rest of the world. The British Isles consist of the two large islands, Great Britain and Ireland, together with a number of small islands. The largest island, Great Britain, consists of England, Wales and Scotland. Britain is an overpopulated country. 80% of her people live in towns and are occupied in industry or in business connected with industry. Iron and steel production. Textiles. Pottery. Shipbuilding. Heavy industries. Automobiles. Chemicals. Electrical equipment aircraft. These are some of the industries by which Britain has established and maintained her place in the economic world. Britain was the birthplace of the modern iron and steel industry and many of the developments connected with this industry originated here. In 1856 Sir Henry Bessemer, a British inventor, devised a method of making steel cheaply and in large quantities. Later in the same year, Sir Charles William Siemens patented improvements to the open hearth furnace process, which enabled steel to be produced even more cheaply. These two methods of producing steel, the Bessemer and the open hearth furnace, are still in use today, although more than half is produced in electric furnaces. The plentiful supply of iron ore, coal, and the chemical substances for the production of steel have led to a vast development of the iron and steel industry. Upon the iron and steel industry, almost every other activity depends. Beautiful fabrics have been made in Britain for centuries. But it was the spinning jenny of James Hodges the spinning frame of Robert Arkwright and Crompton's mule that in the 18th century made the production of textiles possible on a scale hitherto undreamed of. These inventions revolutionized the textile industry. The industrial north of England, with its tradition of fine weaving, its water power and its abundant supply of coal, became the center of textile production for the civilized world. Today, fine woolen cloth from Britain are in demand all over the world. And the production of synthetic fibers such as nylon and terylene are growing industries. New industries, old industries, all depend upon skilled labor. Nowhere is this more obvious than in the pottery industry. The potteries are concentrated in a very small area in the heart of England, yet the output is large and the quality unsurpassed. This industry exports its products throughout the world.
Britain has extensive deposits of coal. This coal was the source of power on which Britain's industrial development was funded. Around the coal fields, the basic industries grew up. The iron and steel industry in the Midlands and the north of England, South Wales and Scotland. The textile industry in Lancashire and Yorkshire, the potteries in Staffordshire and many others. Today, industry is more scattered. Coal is used to generate electricity, which is distributed by a grid system to all parts of the country. A new development is the use of atomic energy to generate electricity. Although it is still in its early stages, one day nuclear power may supersede most other sources. Already nuclear power stations are feeding electricity into the grid system. This countrywide transmission of power is one of the factors leading to a decentralized industry. Nowadays industries such as automobile manufacture are scattered relying upon electrical power fed to them by the grid. Motor cars from Britain are found in every country in the world. Today, Great Britain faces fierce competition from other countries. The penalty of having been an industrial pioneer is that today she must rebuild many of her older factories and replace them with modern up-to-date plants. The skill and competence born of generations of experienced industrial workers will help to keep her in the forefront of industrial production and to pioneer development of new techniques. With the wide and ever-increasing use of electricity, the electronics industry has become very important. The coasts of Britain are bathed by warm water from the North Atlantic drift and the climate is milder and more equable than that of any other land so far from the equator. The prevailing westerly winds are a source of abundant rainfall. Although Britain is sometimes influenced for short periods in winter by cold air from northern Europe in moderate falls of snow, because of the prevailing westerly winds, none of her ports is icebound, as is the case in some lands in similar latitudes. The north and west of Great Britain are mountainous, forming a natural rain barrier so that the great rainfall is in the west. In this heavy rainfall area of the west and the north, cattle rearing is an important occupation. The farmers of Great Britain, in addition to mixed farming, are renowned for the development of fine cattle. In the eastern part of the island, where the rainfall is less, the climate favors the growing of grain. Agriculture is highly mechanized, and compared with other industries, does not occupy a great many people. Since Britain is an island, fish forms an important part of the diet of the people, and large fleets of fishing vessels put to sea in all weathers. The fishing industry is highly organized. And fish in Britain is a comparatively cheap food. Such a perishable commodity must be transported rapidly to the consumer. The bulk of it is conveyed by rail. Great Britain has more than 20,000 miles of railways that radiate from London to every part of the island. The first public passenger train in the world was drawn by a steam engine built by George Stevenson a British engineer in 1825. But his first really successful engine, the rocket, which he built in 1829, together with his many other inventions, laid the foundation of modern rail transport. The efficiency of modern motor transport and the excellent road system have led to an ever-increasing use of roads for both passenger and goods traffic. Transport by canal is declining but bulky materials are still handled by inland waterways. To export her goods, Britain needs to build many ships, and she has created a huge shipbuilding industry.
Britain exports manufactured goods and imports many raw materials and the extra food necessary to maintain her high standard of living. Shipping and commerce have been highly developed to handle these imports and exports. The docks of London form the largest area of enclosed dock water in the world and can accommodate the world's largest ships. The city of London is one of the great commercial and financial centres of the world. It is the centre of a vast ocean trade by which the British people are linked with all parts of the world. Britain was the first great producer of manufactured goods. Today, her leading position is being challenged, but she still enjoys a high standard of living. Britain is a democracy. It is ruled by a hereditary monarch and by an elected parliament that traces its history back to the 13th century and has served as a pattern for many others throughout the world. Above the Houses of Parliament is a huge clock whose bell, Big Ben, is regularly broadcast. The visitor to Britain is impressed by the traditional scenes, the horse guards of the household cavalry, the colourful huntsmen in the county shires, and cricket on the village green. But the real Britain is a land of mechanised farms and of a people who have developed many industrial skills and are used to making goods of a high quality. The wise use of land and the skillful manufacture of quality products have made Great Britain one of the greatest industrial and trading countries of the world.